What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I paired up with Joshua Fluke. He's a big YouTuber in the software engineering space. But what's interesting about Joshua is that unlike me, who comes from a background purely in big tech, Google, Facebook, algorithm interviews, all that good stuff, Joshua comes from a very different type of software engineering background. He's got a lot of experience under his belt. He's worked almost exclusively at non-tech companies or not really tech companies that are more mid-sized and in the middle of America. And so in this video, we compared our experiences. I hope you find the video insightful. We also made another video on his channel where he grilled me about Google, Algo Expert, all sorts of stuff. Go check it out, it'll be in the description and comments. And last thing before we get into the video, Joshua really wanted me to say this. I didn't want to at first, but I guess I'll be nice. He wanted me to tell all of you to smash the like button on this video, so. I guess you, know, you can go ahead and smash the like button if you want. Anyway, enjoy the video. And by the way, do you want me to call you Josh or Joshua? Oh dude, just Josh is good. No Josh. one ever says my actual full name yet. Yeah, okay. Or Fluke. Okay, I'll go with Josh. So Josh, you've worked at a lot of companies, is my understanding, and a lot of them have been mid-sized companies in the middle of America that aren't necessarily tech companies at heart. They just happen to hire software engineers. So I'm really curious. I want to kind of compare your experience to my experience because I've only ever worked at two companies without counting my own company, Algo Expert. I've only worked at Facebook and Google as a software engineer. And so let's let's talk about what's different. So why don't we start yeah. with um, compensation? Is there anything that you want to share about compensation as a software engineer at a company like the ones that you worked at? I mean, there's no competition. Like you make way more money when you work at the bigger companies in Silicon Valley, even even though the cost of living is really high, if you look at the numbers in terms of percentages after bills, you would, you know, let's say you had, let's say you have 30% of your income left over, whereas here in the middle of America, you'd have 15, 16% of your income left over to play with after bills. So yeah, for sure you get paid more and have more left over, even though it costs a lot more just to pay rent and it depends on your financial situation, the student loans and all that stuff. But so what's an example of an entry level software engineering salary at a company like the ones that you worked at? I wouldn't take anything under 50K. 50K okay. would be a great starting point for, for most jobs. In fact, I think, yeah, even maybe maybe 55 or 60K these days. It just depends on where you work. You, were, you were based where? Salt Lake City. Okay, that's what, that's what you're basing yourself off of. Okay, interesting. And would, do you, did most companies give any sort of stock-based compensation or? No, no sign-on bonuses, okay. no bonuses at all. Just here's your salary and you have to pay 50% of your healthcare premiums. <laughs> okay, right. Because that's another thing, which I guess leads me to the next point that I was going to talk about, which is perks and benefits. Because a lot of benefits at at big tech companies and just tech companies in general, right, are financial benefits, like your health insurance, your uh, dental insurance, and all of that. How were the perks and benefits at your companies? Okay, my very first job, part-time software, no benefits, that was just hourly. Okay. Next job, 50K, we had health insurance, but it was basically, you had to pay 90% of the health insurance, so that wasn't really a benefit. Right. And there was no sign-on, just straight salary, 50K. After that, I got a job at 65K and they had decent healthcare benefits and a salary, but the, the benefits were fully paid, so that was nice. Okay. Like you didn't have to pay any premiums at all, no stock or anything like that. 401k no, plans? The two previous companies offered 401k, but it was like after you put in so many like years of service or I whatever. See. It was like a year before they'll match you or even offer it to you, I think. The one company also had 401k, but you had to work there for a year, but no one ended up working there for a year because they let everybody go. So okay. they didn't give us any financial bonuses, just salary and fully paid health care. And then the last company that I, I worked at before I quit uh, didn't even have benefits. They just had, again, a salary, no sign on bonus, n didn't even give you like equipment. Basically, you had to get your own. Right. Uh, so you have to bring your own computer to work. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, and that's, then, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, the, the benefits were nothing like what you get. There's definitely no perks like you get. Like free food? At the startup job, we had food randomly on Fridays. 
At the first job, we would have food every other Friday, like the 50K job. 65K job was remote, so no food there. That's fair. And then uh, the last company we had, we had uh, food every two weeks, but then they took it away for some childish reason, like the office was too loud, and that was to punish us. We're taking food away, and we... You know, we would get snacks right. once a month, but the first day you get snacks, everyone would rush into the snack room, steal all the good stuff, hide it at their desk, and then the snack room is empty for the rest of the month. But what sucks is that, like, my understanding is that this is the norm. This is what most companies are like. And so when you, when you do go work at a big tech company like Google or Facebook, you get pampered because you have these suddenly super high expectations because for me, that to me is like, I'm used to something so different. I'm used to having you know, fully stocked micro kitchens, like three per floor in a 14 floor building where you have everything. You have fresh fruit, you have protein bars, you have any soda or drink that you want, right? You have everything. It's hard to imagine. Well, I guess now I'm working on my own and I, I'm eating like frozen pizza every day, but it's hard to imagine being in a corporate environment without that. Yeah, I mean, I never really expected it. Like. I I never expected any of that, to be right. honest. I didn't even know that was a thing, really, until you, you look at the applications and you see, like, fully stocked kitchen and stuff, and you're like, oh, that seems super cool. But before I started software, I was a mechanical engineer, and none of that existed at all. Right. So just even the little step-ups when it comes to those perks was huge for me. So imagine, like, being at Google, it's like you could just live there yeah. pretty much. Yeah, you, you really can. Obviously, it depends on your personality, but I think that especially people who are earlier on in their career might not have families or big responsibilities it's very often for them to just like borderline live there because you know you have these these amazing gourmet style meals for breakfast lunch and dinner you have all of these snacks all of these things you have gyms showers and all that why wouldn't you take advantage of all these benefits you know granted you have to stay in the office longer but do you think people end up living there and working more than they should out of curiosity it's funny on the one hand, I would say yes, but with a caveat, because here the, this typically has a negative connotation, like, oh, you're, you're, you're working much more, you know? No, I'm saying more like the company benefits so much from not having its employees have to, for instance, go outside for lunch, right? They can just stay there and they can keep talking about work over lunch with their coworkers or that kind of stuff, be closer to their computers. On the other hand, do you spend, you know, two more hours per day in the office specifically because of the food benefits? No, I would say no, because like a lot of people will stay until 6.30 right at the opening bell of dinner and then they'll leave five minutes later after they've eaten dinner. So, not really. Okay. But I guess going back now to, to uh, the, the, the thing of, you know, the, the types of companies that you worked at, I think that these are the, the glaring differences. The glaring differences are compensation and perks and benefits. Um, and compensation is especially glaring if you compare it to high cost of living areas like the Bay Area or New York. But even in, in you know, the offices that Google has, for instance, in Texas or Colorado, the salaries are still pretty high there. But where I think we actually might have more similarities than we think is in the day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day work. Like, what was your day-to-day -day work as a software engineer like? So, I negotiated, like, flexible hours. That was always a big thing to me. I'm okay. a morning person, so after about, like, 2, 3 o'clock, my brain's kind of toasted in terms of productivity. Okay. Uh, so, I'd always wake up super early, get to the office at, like, 5, do my 8 hours, stay at work, eat lunch at work. I wouldn't go out, and uh, then I would leave. But it, most of my jobs, we had stand-up. My last job, we did not have stand-up. I was kind of like flying solo, but a majority of the day, I was just coding with music on Spotify in the background. I'd get up, go to the snack room, see what's left, you know, and then keep coding pretty much that people would come by, look over your shoulder, hey, what you working on? Hey, this is what I'm working on. Hey, this is that thing you asked me to do. What do you think of it? This is the progress. This is the update. Okay, looks good. Okay, well, here's some issues that I'm having. It might take a minute here. I just wanted to let you know so you're in the know and you don't get all frustrated with me later. You know, just regular stuff, I guess. Is that, I mean, I assume it's what you did. Same same kind of deal. Yeah, it really is, like, exactly the same. And that's where I think people might have a misconception about, you know, fan companies. They might think that the work is extremely different. Not really. As far as, like, what you are actually doing, it's what you're saying. You're coding, 
if you're a software engineer, you're coding, you're writing design docs, you're talking to people like, hey, did you review my code? Hey, we have this meeting where we have to review the feature specs, and that's basically it. Yep, that's pretty much. You review whatever you coded, and yes, this works, no, this doesn't work, okay, let's refactor. You go through the frustrations of, of that, you know, just regular regular day-to-day -day life. Obviously, sometimes you put YouTube open on the side, right? Listen to yep. some podcast in the background, whatever. That's how it was also for me. Like, half of my coworkers would have either, like, YouTube or Twitch in the background or some podcast, you know, Reddit. But yep. where, where I think there might be a little bit of a difference, though, in the day-to-day -day is in the kinds of tools and yeah, internal tooling and tech stack that, that we used. At Google and Facebook, but especially at Google, everything is internal only. Al almost every tool that you use is a Google-built tool that is either an externally available product, like Google Docs, or an internal only product, like the thing, like the, the GitHub equivalent that we had at Google or the code searching search engine that we had at Google. What about you? Like, were the companies that you worked at in using internal tools that they built? Were you using popular external internal tools? They were your your popular tech stacks that every company wants you to know. You talk on Slack, you use Trello or Jira, some Atlassian suite of right. some sort. Yep. GitHub for version control, or like Git, I guess is what you'd say, right? Uh, but we used GitHub, but at, at my last company, we used TFS, which is <laughs> so bad. But yeah, nothing was really proprietary. Nothing. There were no tools built by the company that we used. But you see here, to I do think the job. You, I think that you have an advantage here because I think that now, if you want to do your own company or if you're switching jobs, you know the tech stack that they use, or you know the tech stack that you have to use for your new company. For me, when I left Google, it was like, well, wait. How do I how do I you know run tests or continuous integration tests again without having the black box magic that Google has you know internally? I'm so used to or I was so used to these tools that are only available at Google or only available at Facebook that I was at a disadvantage there. I think. I, yeah, I mean I don't know. I, I mean like I just I just know what was popular because that's what they all required. And once you see the pattern of job applications all requesting that you get some sort of you know version control understanding some sort of agile software that you use uh you be able to communicate with some software we used was it like windows teams or something and then slack we used google hangouts for daily stand-up we did a, we did a lot of different just it was all third party the you know, like what you said at the beginning most of the companies were not tech companies Right. Focus solely on that, except for except for one. The last company I worked at, that was solely a software. They just sold their own software okay. to third parties, and so that whole company was based on like uh, customer, uh, like what do they call it? Customer success. You know, just basically yeah. account managers, and then they would have salespeople, business analyst people pulling SQL reports all day. And did, just software devs. Did you see a difference between working at that more like tech focused company versus the companies that were building non tech products? And in what what way? You know, a difference in how? Well, like at Google, for instance, people always say this is an engineering company, and engineers are treated like royalty, and you can just tell that there's this like prominent engineering culture. Whereas apparently at, if you work as an engineer at a bank, for instance, you're kind of like the second class citizen. You know, the investment bankers are the first class citizens, not the software engineers. Well, to be, to, to be honest, at that job that sold, solely sold software, uh, they didn't really care because a <laughs> lot of the software engineers were outsourced. It was more about selling than if the product was engineered well, in my right. personal opinion so we were kind of like yeah we got to get one of those coder guys to make this thing for us or how much do they cost like it wasn't like we need to make this a great product it was just like a customer asked for this so we need someone to make it but the people overseas the outsourced people are busy so let's hire someone in-house and that's where i got a job gotcha i see yeah. i see well listen josh this was super cool i think this gives people a good idea of what's going to be different and what's gonna be very similar 
when you work at either a fang company or a mid-sized, maybe non-tech company in the non-coastal areas of the United States. But do you have any last words that you want to share with my audience? There are a lot of like bigger companies out there, like where you worked, but there are also like a ton of decent smaller companies and some yep. of them do have the perks but some of them don't but i wouldn't say like go into a software job expecting the perks because they can just get removed from yeah. you but like obviously that won't happen at the big companies where you worked you know just like a majority of people end up working at no-name companies like i did you know i got not just some rando company on the resume right and i guess that's okay too but obviously you're gonna make buku's amounts of bucks if you hit that google life <laughs> wait was that french was that <laughs> Buku? Buku bucks? No, it's just like a lot of money. You will you will be rich. Oh, that's the French word for a lot. Buku is the French word for a lot. Well, today we today I learned, dude. Today today you learned. You you can go today post on Reddit. Anyway, <laughs> Josh, thank you so much for for being here. We actually made a video on Josh Josh's channel where he asked me questions about Google and about Algo Expert and all kinds of stuff. So go check it out. Go show him some love. Uh, he's almost at 200k subscribers. He might even be past it by the time you see this video. But go check him out and show him some love. Thanks, dude.